Hey, LaGrand Alive, this is your weekly news-ish roundup, brought to you by Direct Music Source and Grand Ronde Hospital. Pot is hot in the valley these days. Everybody's talking about it, except the hillbillies, and that's probably because they're the ones growing it. And the question of how to exactly to deal with the new federal deregulation of the drug is popping up all over the valley. Several weeks ago, union resi residents proposed a ban on the growth and sale of non-medical weed in their city. It will probably be on the voting ballot here soon. This weekend, the DEA in Salem refused to take the drug off the dangerous drug list and reinforced the resolution that hemp, another cannabinoid, products are still illegal despite pretty much every other state and its brother saying they're not. And nor now, North Powder is trying to get it figured out too. They will also be voting on it here soon. Two ballots on the November 8th election that, if passed, would legalize the sale of recreational and medical pot. So here's the ultimate question for you, Legrand. How many licks does it take to get to the center of a lollipop? Just kidding. What should we do about the pot? How should small towns deal with this? They have legitimate concerns for the health and well-being of their towns. But at the same time, the pot train is rolling, and how long can they really hold out before the growers and smokers get it legalized? How should they deal with the quickly rising rate of legalization? What kind of taxes should be imposed, if any? Answer with your thoughts and comments in the box below. All right, here's the moral of this next story before we begin. Kids, don't get drunk, wander off into the woods, break somebody else's stuff, then get lost and have to have search and rescue come and find you. Four youths aged 20 and younger were found this weekend by search and rescue about 20 miles out of La Grande, a little northeast of Interstate 84. They were dehydrated and tired, the rescuer said, and now three of them are being charged with criminal mischief, the crime involving damage of another person's property. Now, none of these youths have been indicted or found guilty yet, so don't go around telling people that they're just a bunch of bad kids with worse directional skills. But the moral still stands. Kids, don't drink and hike. And if you do, make sure you bring a park ranger or, I don't know, a compass with you so that you don't have to call search and rescue to come get your thirsty butt with your tail between your legs and some farmer on your tail for drunkenly crashing his tractor into a cliff. Disclaimer. Creative license was taken with this story for emotional effect. And speaking of criminal activities, here's another moral. If someone calls you and wants you to pave your driveway here sometime soon, don't believe them. Well, believe them, but don't do it. It's a trap. Apparently, there's a new scam going around Union County. A group of pavers will call at random a household and offer to repave their driveway at a reduced rate with leftover materials from another job. The deal is so good, the residents agree, and several weeks on a crappily done driveway later, they're slammed with an inflated bill that's much higher than the original quote and a heavy obligation to pay up on the job they wouldn't otherwise have needed. And the worst part of it, the scammers aren't really doing anything illegal. Apparently, everything they're doing is within the letter of the law. Um, and though the residents aren't required to pay them, most feel guilted or intimidated into actually paying the bill. Fortunately, awareness about the scam is growing, and the issue and the people are backing off. But it never hurts to share this video along to warn a few other poor souls about the infamous asphalt bandits. Not that we're shamelessly plugging ourselves or anything. Anyways, there's a lot going on here in the Grand Ronde Villa that's not criminal, too. Tonight, there's music at Max Square on Adams Avenue in the Grand. Things do actually happen there outside of electronic Pokemon duels. Also this weekend, the We Like Them Short Film Festival is in Baker City. The films are short, but the fun is long, apparently, and the screenings start tonight and run until Saturday. Also this weekend in Baker, Dr. Balthazar wants to sell you special medicine. It's actually a play going on at the National Historic Oregon Trail Interpretive Center, and you should go on Friday, Saturday, or Sunday at 7 p.m., 7 p.m., and 11 a.m., respectively. There's also live music at Barley Browns and Baker at 8 p.m. Friday. And cherries! There's cherries out the wazoo this weekend in Cove, Oregon. Their annual cherry festival will include live music, a run, hot air balloons, contests, a pancake breakfast, presentations, and that's just as a start. For more information on the festival, read Go Magazine this week. They have a full spread on it and all the, on all the events and start times. Also this weekend, the Eagle Cap Excursion Train is having an early bird ride on Saturday at 9 a.m. Lunch is included. 
And last, all you Pink Floyd fans, head to McKenzie Theater at, at EOU on Saturday for Pigs on the Wing, a tribute band that's coming to Eastern Oregon. In sports, Billingsley has gone big time and he's already scoring. Jace Billingsley is an ex-EOU football star and he's gone to train with the Detroit Lions and had a touchdown last Friday. Their game was against Pitt, the Pittsburgh Steelers and they won 30-17. Billingsley had three receptions including a 27-yard catch and run touchdown for the game. Man, with our runners going to the Olympic trials and our football players getting touchdowns um, for the Detroit Lions, Legrand is like one seven millionth of the wave toward becoming a bona fide sports center of the Northwest United States. And in slightly less impressive news, I finished the Elkhorn Relay last weekend. And so did everyone else. I did it slowly, but I rescued an elk from barbed wire in the process. Only in or Eastern Oregon, baby. The winning team was the OS Usuals, a track and field turgid team from OSU that traveled over to win the race with about a 27.5 hour finish time. Great job guys. Overall the race was extremely well put together. There, were, there was food and outhouses at every pit stop for all the nervous pre-race eaters and poopers, which is pretty much every runner ever. The volunteers were pleasant and eager to keep the waiting teammates entertained with talk, and despite the race officials cutting my nine mile up and down to a six mile mostly dropped. The runs were challenging, but not excruciatingly so. Overall, if you're a runner, the Elkhorn Relay is a pleasant 30 plus hour experience of running in backwoods Grand Ronde Valley and enjoying the company of five other sleep deprived, sore and coffee crazed casual runners and doing something that will make most people's eyes get wide when you tell them about it. And that's your weekly news roundup. This roundup was brought to you by Grand Ron Hospital and Direct Music Source. And this week, we're going to leave you with a little tune from Pendulum Swing, a jazz and swing band that we had in for a coffee with Will and a song yesterday. For the full interview and song, check out our website at www.lickrandalive.tv or our Facebook page. I'm Will Bowman. <laughs> myself, no one to talk with, but I'm happy on the shelf, ain't misbehaving, I'm saving my life for you, I know for certain, the one I love, I'm through with flirting, it's just you I'm thinking of, ain't misbehaving, I'm saving my life for you.